The near 35-year-old Steph has been shockingly consistent in 22-23 so far, somehow topping his previous single-season best in points per game, rebounds per game, field goal percentage, and three-point percentage. To ice the game under pressure, first he goes straight up defensively and grabs the board, then on the other end, gets Eric Gordon isolated and goes double hesitation dribble, slight drive entry on the second hezzy, while muscling off the glued onto him Gordon, then a moving behind the back is followed by a very slight smitty move and another hezzy dribble, this time leading into a Harden-esque step back plus Kobe-esque fadeaway, resulting in a deep range bomb. Stephen Curry doesn't make any sense, more plays like that are broken down in this video, and stay tuned for more. Right quick just 9.4% of you watching are subscribed, so hit the box and turn on notifications if you haven't done so yet, and tap thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Over the last half decade, Steph's made creatively mind-boggling behind-the-back moves one of his patented weapons. He's always been incredible at baiting off-handed drives and bouncing off his right pivot foot to take up a ton of space to the opposite side while of course simultaneously moving the ball around his body. The quick twitch elusiveness of the move even helps Curry get his teammates wide open triples. Despite witnessing all of that, this possession against New York was still shocking. Look at the gravity Steph draws from Cam Reddish after a simple shrug of the shoulders as the off-ball fake gives Steph enough space for the backdoor cut. Problem is, after getting the bounce pass, Hartenstein rotates onto him and Reddish recovers to seemingly force Steph to pick up his dribble. Instead, Curry's classic off-handed hesitation and leap off that right pivot foot gives him the leverage to split two defenders in mid-air. How do you even think of something like this? And the reaction afterwards like, oh my goodness, I'm an alien. <laughs> Curry's fadeaway jump shot is another weapon he can whip out of his bag on the rare occasion. It's a shot which Steph's been trying to add to his repertoire for a number of years now. According to NBA.com, Steph's made three of his four fadeaway jump shots this season, and last year, he made six of his 13 fadeaway jumpers. Steph didn't attempt more than 10 fadeaway jumpers within a single season from 2016-17 up until 2021, but the year before Durant arrived in 2015-16, Curry took 21 total fadeaways and made 13 of them. But in the post-Kevin Durant era and the later stages of his career, Steph's been trying to make that fade a shot he can turn to. While the play I broke down in the intro was something you probably saw replayed all over social media, a minute before that, Steph again got the mismatch isolated onto him and goes signature combo, momentum cross to his offhand and hezzy step back. And despite this probably not being labeled as a fadeaway on paper and instead being called a step back, the body control under pressure and leaning back dagger shows you that Steph works on these Kobe-esque fallaways about 24-7. Curry's craftiness, wherewithal, hand-eye coordination, and conditioning allow him to almost always know exactly how much space he has between he and the defender and execute instinctively. Golden State's down two with just under two minutes remaining, and notice how Steph has the stamina to bait step back jumper out of two separate combos before he realizes Terrence Davis is right there and gets the first step to his left. A pump fake fools the recovering TD, Sabonis picks up, but Curry's soft touch and balance allow him to just lean back and fundamentally create space. Mentally, Curry's always one step ahead of the defense, so the next offensive possession, he's well aware Sacramento's naturally going to be worried about all the finesse he just showed off working off the bounce in the lane. Directly after Green's pick gets Curry's matchup off him and Davis, Steph attacks, which gets Herder thinking Steph's going to maybe find Draymond on the roll, or like last possession, get an overpowering first step. Because of how he times it and sells drive with his body language, Steph's seemingly simple all-in-one motion between the legs momentum to his offhand and step back was evidently the last thing on Kevin's mind. That right there is a once-in-a-lifetime combination of off-the-dribble space creation and shooting mechanics slash range that we should all appreciate getting to witness. Steph's been having the best year of his career from every area on the floor, which is insane for a player in his 14th season. And a great point about Curry is that no superstar in NBA history has continued to improve their game until age 34 like Steph is currently doing. The biggest area of improvement that's made Steph impossible to game plan for this year is his finishing. He's making 80.9% of his shots from 0 to 3 feet, a career best by over 10 percentage points from any other year. Simply incredible. Here, Landell respects that finishing ability and stays low in his drop coverage, but Steph proves you simply can't be that far back. Conundrum for defenses is that you also can't be too far up in drop coverage as Landell makes the adjustment the next time down, but bites on an in and out move and recovers late to give Steph the and one. 
That game in Phoenix, albeit in a blowout loss for Golden State, saw Steph post his 11th career 50-point game. To finally give the Warriors their first road victory, at 34 years and 251 days old, Steph became the second oldest player in league history to record at least 30 plus points and 15 plus assists. The monster bounce back performance from Clay and the typically efficient outing from Maple Jordan Andrew Wiggins could be covered in a separate video. Today it's important we give the proper credit to the consistently elite playmaking, leadership, and hustle from the man who the dynasty will start and end with. Curry's career true shooting percentage is the sixth most efficient in the history of basketball. Reason that's incredible is because think of where Steph shoots it from. Anyone else in the top 10 is either a forward or a center. In fact, the only non-center in the top 10 all-time greatest true shooting marks ever is Cedric Maxwell, who never attempted a three-pointer in his career. But let's go from looking at what Steph's done throughout the entirety of his career to what this man's doing specifically this season. According to StatMuse, Curry's currently having the most efficient 30-plus point-per-game season in NBA history on a per-possession basis. Essentially, a Steph shot is worth more than anyone's ever, and by a wide margin. The same gap between the number one ranked Curry and number two ranked Jordan in that category is the same gap between the number two ranked Jordan and the number 20 ranked Shea Gilgis Alexander. What's most impressed you so far about Steph? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out and the top five commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's speaks winners from my last two uploads are firstly Phantom of Delphi who says the West looks pretty open right now so the Suns are definitely a threat to make the finals. I think they're capable of beating any any team in a series, but I'm not sure they can beat the Bucks or Celtics in the finals. And secondly, to Hamish S, who says, it is straight up disrespectful to call the Kings run a fluke. I've been watching Sacramento, and the way this team is gelling is insane. With Sabonis' offensive movement and Fox's speed, the two are becoming one of the better duos in the league. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.